All right, so let's talk about the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. So I am a little bit of like a Petite Knit, not super fan, but I really like their patterns. I feel like they really like hit the mark between like vintage inspired, which I do really like, and very like classic wardrobe staples, very wearable knitting patterns. So this is not my first petite knit pattern. My first petite knit sweater pattern was the anchor sweater for myself. And I really, really like that one. I wear it all the time because it fits really nicely. And I feel like that's something that in general, they do tend to fit really well. Uh, petite knit patterns if you get gauge. Um, and towards the end of last year, I had basically decided that I wanted to knit a sweater for my husband. So looking through different patterns that I had saved on Ravelry, I do look pretty regularly and save things to my favorites just to be able to find them easier later. And I saw the zipper sweater men's version, and it was something that I knew like he would actually wear. It's I am someone who really like, I don't like knitting things if I don't think that I'm going to use and wear them. And especially if I'm knitting for somebody else. So if I'm knitting somebody a gift, I wanna make sure that it's something that they really like and that it's something that they're really going to cherish and use because otherwise it's not like worth the effort for me. So I chose the zipper pattern for him. I obviously checked to see if he would actually wear it first and I knew that he would and he would. So I set off to knit the men's version. So today I kind of wanted to just talk through the men's version that I knit for my husband. And then after I knit his, I knew I needed one for myself. So I knit myself a zipper sweater, but I didn't use the women's version of the pattern. I figured they're so close and I'm, you know, I, I'm happy to mess around with a pattern. I don't feel the need to like follow a pattern to the T. I figured with a little bit of trust and ability to rip things out if they go wrong, that I could adjust the men's version of the pattern to my own like preferences for a women's version for myself. So I thought I would talk through the men's version first, and then I will talk about the changes and details for the women's version that I made for myself. So the first thing to choose for my husband's version was the yarn. So the yarn called for in the pattern, I think it's it's a Sandisgarn, ooh, let's see if I can pronounce this. It's probably not gonna sound pretty. Sandisgarn Frittisgarn, and it is a bulky weight yarn. And that is not a yarn that is either easily accessible or maybe it was just like out of my price range. Um, and so I had to choose something different. The yarn that I ended up using for this version is Cascade Wool Eco Plus in the shade Coffee. So this is also a bulky weight yarn. I basically went on Yarn Sub, the website Yarn Sub, and looked for a yarn that was going to be in my price range that had similar enough characteristics to the yarn called for in the pattern, which is what I pretty much always do. I very rarely use the yarn that's specifically called for in a pattern, and I will just try to find what either I have in my stash that will work and get gauge or is as similar as possible on yarn sub. So for this, I think I only needed three skeins or I ordered three skeins and had extra because the skeins of this are humongous. Uh, it looks like it's 250 grams or 478 yards per skein. Um, and I have tons left over. So this is definitely like a budget friendly yarn. However, I'm not like super thrilled with it. I will so, I'll show some close-ups of the wear and tear that it's already had. He does wear the sweater pretty frequently, but it's only been like one season. So I gave this to him, I think in early December and he's worn it for three and a half, four months now. And it's, um, it has a lot of pilling, especially underneath the arms, on the side of the body, anywhere where the sweater is like rubbing up against itself has shown a lot of wear. And I'm not really thrilled with that. However, it was really nice to knit with. It did smell a little bit sheepy, uh, sheepier kind of than I expected when I received it, but it doesn't like, it doesn't smell at all anymore. I think it smelled, honestly, until I washed it. So 
it's definitely if you are someone who really doesn't like really sheepy smelling wool it might be one to pass on because if it's going to be hard for you to work with it's it's definitely sheepy so after I finally got the yarn in and caked up and ready to go, I knit my gauge swatch and found that the needles that are called for, I did not get gauged, like not even close. So I ended up using size US 10 needles to knit the body of this sweater and I believe US 8 for all of the ribbing. And with those needles, I was able to achieve, if not exactly gauge, like close enough. And for my husband's version, I knit him the size small because that's where he, you know, landed on the size chart. This sweater was the first kind of more involved sweater that I've ever knit. Uh, every sweater I had knit previously would maybe have like a little bit of like flatten in the round, but was for the most part just like a top down, knit in the round, seamless sweater. So this has you start with the collar it has like fully encased seams that you do a little tinkering with as you go. And while it's not, I wouldn't call it like a hard pattern. It is something that if you're not used to knitting a slightly more involved sweater that you do have to like pay attention as you're going, especially until you get to the body, which is then just knit in the round. So for both my husband's version and for mine, and, and honestly, especially for mine, I found the collar parts to be the most tedious. You knit the ribbing flat for quite a while before you like really start getting going on the sweater. And I found for both of them that it was kind of just, by the time I was getting towards the end of it, it was like, you needed to set it down for a day because I like just couldn't stand looking at ribbing anymore. So after you get through the top of the ribbing, you're gonna be doing basically like raglan increases. There are some short rows as well, and you continue knitting flat for like the whole zipper placket. After you knit through the end of like the zipper area of the sweater, that's when you start joining it into the round. Knit the whole thing just in stockinette. This makes it one of those patterns where all of the thinking is up front. So you knit like basically the whole yoke that's all of the brain power and then from there it's just very simple body very simple sleeves there are some decreases and then ribbing and casting off for my for this first version i did not do the recommended cast off i just did a standard stretchy i think i think i might have done like jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off on this one um, just because I wasn't feeling like up to the task of doing an Italian bind off, which I then learned and did for mine. As is the case, I find that most petite knit patterns are fairly straightforward. There's not a lot of fluff. There's not a lot of like talking you through the steps within the pattern. They do have instructional videos that you can find on the petite knit website or just on YouTube that shows you how to do individual steps that are a little bit more challenging like for the zipper especially you have like the front of the zipper that you've been knitting and seeing the whole time and then after you're basically done with the entire sweater you knit a facing to cover up the zipper from the inside of the sweater it's not really challenging but it is the first time you do it it's something that it's nice to see how someone else has done first and it is really helpful even though the uh, videos are not in English and they're also not translated, but if you come into it just like having a general idea of how it's supposed to go, it does help to be able to see how the different parts go together. For this sweater, I did find the zipper placket to be just a little bit challenging. Not in that, it's not like it's the pattern's fault, but I was having a hard time basically getting the front part of the placket to be straight. And this was due to sewing it down after I knit it. So basically you knit the whole part that goes on the inside and then you sew it down and then you sew your zipper in. So I did that. I sewed it down, I sewed my zipper in, went to start, go, <laughs> I went to go block it and I was like, that's crooked. Like it just doesn't look right. And basically had to like hunt for the like, I had to hunt to find like the wool thread that I had used to sew it down with so that I could unpick it and redo it. 
I essentially just like was off by a row as I went and it just made the whole thing look crooked and it was kind of lumpy and I was just really not happy with it. And I learned for my second one how to knit it together and that way it kind of solves that problem before it happens. As for the zipper for both versions, I did hand sew them in. I know you could theoretically sew them on a sewing machine, but I just find zippers are tricky enough. And I do have some like sewing background, like I do know how to use my sewing machine, but I just find that like knit fabric is so stretchy. And this is like a hand knit sweater. I just didn't want to screw it up and like get anything stuck in like the teeth of the sewing machine or have like the fabric pull funny as it was going through because the zipper doesn't have any give, but the fabric certainly does. And I wanted to make sure that it sat as nice and flat as it could. So like I said, my husband does get a lot of wear out of this. He wears it all the time, even though we have to like pick the fuzz off of it, which does drive me a little bit crazy. So I do think there's another zipper sweater in my future where I'm going to knit the same men's version, but in a color that both of us will like, so that way I can wear it too. <laughs> not that I don't like the brown, but like I just, I don't know. It's fine, but it's not like my favorite color to wear. Now for my version, this is my most recent, like totally finished garment. I have a lot on the go right now actually, but essentially, like I said, when I knit my husband's version, I was like, yep, I'm gonna be knitting that for myself. But I didn't wanna buy the pattern because, because the women's version and the men's version, they are quite similar. And I know the proportions are a little bit different and the ribbing is a little bit different. The intended ease is different. The yarn is different like this sounds like a lot of differences and it might just be worth buying the second pattern but i believed in myself <laughs> i thought basically i know that if it ends up towards the size that fits my husband it'll just be an oversized fit on me but if i'm able to kind of size it down how i would like to that using the numbers from the men's small is going to basically get me set up on the right track so i knit mine intentionally with lighter weight yarn and smaller needles. So for my version, I knit this with a DK weight yarn held with a lace weight yarn. And I knit the entire thing, I think, uh, including the ribbing, pretty sure, I knit on size eight needles. So this is lighter weight than the pattern calls for, and I don't believe that it's the same size needles that are called for either. I chose for this stash yarn, basically. So I had uh, a sweater's quantity of Knit Picks, Knit Picks Swish, uh, let me get this right. It's Knit Picks Bear Swish DK yarn. So it's, they're completely undyed. It's for like people who wanna do yarn dyeing themselves. I tinkered around with that for like a minute, basically decided I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I had an entire sweater quantity and knew it needed to go somewhere. I don't dislike this yarn, but I don't generally prefer superwash yarns anymore. So although I am glad, like I get so much wear out of this, I wear it all the time. I don't prefer like the feel of superwash yarns. It's like too slippery. It's like a little bit warmer. Like this, I think my version is much warmer than my husband's. That's, I think it's just 100% wool. I held this Swish DK with a lace weight alpaca yarn. I'm pretty sure that the alpaca yarn that I used is Valley Yarns Hatfield, and the color is like caramel or camel maybe. I've been having a hard time like looking back through my emails and seeing which one is this exact yarn. However, I'm pretty sure that's it. And I knew that I wanted to hold the DK weight yarn with another either like mohair or the alpaca because I wanted to get that kind of marled look. And that's one of the things that I am like the most happy about with this sweater is the effect of marling the DK weight yarn with the lace weight yarn I think looks really, really nice. I think it kind of adds to like the wearability of it because it's not quite as like stark white as the plain bare yarn would have been, but it's also not like a camel color. I don't think that that would be like my go-to look. 
So like I said, I knit my version with the men's small numbers. However, I did make quite a few changes as I was going to make it more similar to the women's version. So the first thing was knitting the collar. And so I knit this collar in twisted rib, which I did not enjoy. Knitting twisted rib flat was the opposite of pleasurable. I really had to like make myself work on it so that I could get to the end. Part of getting to the end of it, and it's also like a design feature that I'm glad that I did, but I knit my collar an inch shorter than what was called for in the pattern. So because it's folded, it's like a half inch shorter than the men's version total, but it was an inch less of knitting, if that makes sense. From there, I followed the instructions for the raglan increases where those are placed. I uh, did all the short rows as those are described. The only thing that I did differently is I joined it in the round sooner than you're supposed to. So basically, <laughs> I got tired of knitting it flat and uh, just joined it in the round and was like, I will have a shorter zipper and that is perfectly okay for me and I don't mind that the zipper itself will be a little bit shorter if I can knit in the round faster. Now this is where things get a little bit sketchy. Not sketchy, but like a little bit not quite right. After I joined it in the round, I was like, I know what I'm doing. Like I know how sweaters work from here. I'm perfectly happy to just go my own way and I stopped paying attention to the pattern. Which I don't I don't regret doing, but it did come up with a slight inconsistency in the amount of ease that I have in the arms and the amount of ease that I have in the body. So I don't know, because I stopped reading the pattern and I'm not going to go back and count, but I don't know if it's a proportion for the men's that they have bigger arms than the body, which would make a lot of sense, obviously, or if it's just from me not doing enough increases for the ratio of how big the arms are to how big the body was. However, I am really happy with the overall ease of this sweater. So the arms, yes, are like a little bit bigger than maybe they should be, but it is a lot more close fitting on me, like much, much more so than when I put on my husband's version. However, I think it fits really nicely and I get a ton of wear out of it because I think it looks nice. I don't love a humongously oversized sweater and I do think that is the one thing about petite knit sweaters for women that I don't always like is that they sometimes have like huge amounts of ease that I don't necessarily think is my favorite look. But obviously you can just choose a pattern based on the finished garment size which is what I typically do but in this case I just kind of wung it, winged it, and ended up with a little bit too much ease in the arms and like the perfect amount of ease in the body. Overall, absolutely no problems with that and I wear it all the time. Another change that I did for my version is instead of doing even decreases on the arms, which I think is what's called for in the pattern, I did um, more tapered sleeves. So the increases get closer together the closer you get to the wrist and the ribbing for the wrist, it's a lot longer than it is on the men's version. And actually looking back on the pattern, I tried to match up all of my ribbing to be about the same length. And I think in the actual women's version that the ribbing for the sleeves is much, much longer. So I honestly, I kind of like how mine fits. I don't mind that it's not quite as long as the pattern and uh, I knit the sleeves a little bit longer than I would normally, so they're very like cozy, which I really enjoy. As I mentioned earlier, for my husband's version, I just did a regular stretchy bind off because I didn't want to mess around with trying to learn the Italian bind off, uh, but I did do that for my version, and after I learned that it's basically just Kitchener stitch but knit flat, it was like done easy like i'm gonna do this all the time it looks so good i do find that the cuffs are a little bit tighter I, the tension on italian bind off is something that i'm going to need to learn how to work out a little bit better but i do think that the look 
is worth the effort. I think it looks so nice. So I mentioned for my husband's version that it pills a lot and that's something that I'm not very happy with. This version that I wear for myself, I wear it probably just as often as my husband wears his, although it, I did get it less recently, um, but it has not had the same issue with pilling. So that is definitely something to note. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's more of like a gauge thing or a yarn thing. It's probably a yarn thing. Um, but I am glad that mine's not pilling as much because it's like effort to take care of my husband's version, which is why I want to knit a third. So for the third version, I really want to make sure that I choose the right yarn and a yarn that is going to be something that's not too itchy, um, so that it can be worn. I wear this, like I'm just wearing a tank top, but it, so it's basically right next to skin. Um, my husband always wears this with like long sleeve shirts underneath. So I want it to be something that is next to skin soft and won't be as pilly and it will be a bulky weight yarn. So if you have any recommendations for a yarn that like fits those characteristics, please let me know. <laughs> I've been doing so much research and have not like come to a decision on what my third and maybe final zipper sweater will be but if you have any recommendations, please let me know. I think that's just about everything that I wanted to say about the zipper sweater. Please let me know if you have knit this yourself or if you're working on it now. I love to see everybody's versions of it. I saw someone do it with um, like boucle yarn and it looked so good. I have actually, <laughs> I have a sweater's quantity worth of boucle yarn and like I could knit myself another one, but I, I shouldn't, but I might. This is what I'm talking about of like so many knits, so little time. Like it takes, t it, I'm not a very fast knitter. So it takes me a lot of time to finish an entire sweater, but I do think a boot play one could look really good. Mm. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have to say. Please let me know if you have any yarn recommendations for me for my third zipper sweater, not boot clay, something that both me and my husband will wear, and I will see you next time. Bye.